Aries and welcome to your March 2017 reading with me. Hey, thanks for joining me. Sit back and relax and see what messages will be coming your way. We're going to be using nine different cards for this month's reading. You'll see how that pans out. We'll work through it as we proceed with the reading. So first of all, we will be using the Morgan Greer cards and four of them, one for each week of the month. And then we will have um, clarifying cards underneath it. And then we are going to tune in for a final message at the end of the reading. So Aquarius, this is your reading. Let's see what's in store for you guys for March. Of course, you know that we will have had the first month of eclipses will have been and gone for February. So let's see what type of energies March is bringing in. They will work roughly for each week of the month, but there is more of a fluid flow than a set perspectives. So your first card is the Emperor. Your second is the King of Rods. Your third is the Four of Cups. And your fourth is the Ace of Swords. There's a lot of orangey, yellowy glow going on there with your cards. So I think if we talk about the body and vibrational energies, we're talking about strength, your solar plexus, and also your sacral chakra. Those are areas of creativity and strength. Now these cards are called the Soul's Journey card. And we are going to be pushing one card under each of these to ascertain what the more in-depth messages around the cards. So Aquarius, that is loneliness. The King of Rods gets change. I'll move them and space them a little more. The Four of Cups gets death. And the Ace of Swords gets humour. So we're going to be working intuitively with these cards and the messages and the readings as well as the colour palette and the mandalas as well. Now I just um, mentioned to you we were definitely looking at the orange and the sacral chakra energies so we're definitely getting a lot of that coming through. I think for you guys we're talking about moving into a realm of creativity for you and the king of rods also denotes that as well. Let's start though with the first card up on the left, which is the Emperor card. The Emperor card is often known about the energy of the month of Aries perspective. So funnily enough, that is March, April type of energy. And the card next to that, the King of Rods, is also a fire sign energy. And the two of them are looking back a little bit into the past as if something was ignited in the past that could be initiated or energized again in March and April. And given that this is the March reading, it's quite nice and coincidental. The Emperor also stands for the possibilities of um, new people coming into your life. That could be Aries people. So for some of you seeking new partners, you might be coming across someone like this and they might be filling this realm of loneliness. Or consequently, there could be something around an Aries energy or a fire sign energy person who may be um, creating a feeling or a vacuum of slight emptiness. So they could be either not communicating properly or they could be choosing to remove themselves or distance themselves in one way or another. Now that could be at the physical perspective or in the communication realm. Given that this card is blue and blue is the realm of communication, I feel that there could be some sort of either block around communication with an Aries person or um, a fire sign energy or there could be a block in communication around about this time period. So there are many layers and levels to which we can be addressing these cards as you can see and they're quite interactive and quite connective. For each one of you the messages that come across could be quite different but you should be able to feel into these cards yourself and um, know intrinsically which one connects with you and which one makes more sense. Now the Emperor card can also be known about periods in time when we are addressing issues around legal matters. 
The emperor is quite often known as an older person who is law abiding citizen and someone who makes rules or keeps rules. He could be someone that you are going to to um, have counsel with or mediation as well. So someone like a lawyer or a litigative person or a mediator. And again, this could be connected into the realm of loneliness, of either feeling that something hasn't been working right or connected right within relationships, and it might need addressing or mediation. The loneliness message on the bottom of the card is really important to take um, into consideration because it says, I know that I am never alone. And if you look at the Mandela picture on the loneliness card, you see all of those people there all structured in together. Um, their feet are actually joined on planet Earth and their arms face up and out into the universe. So it tells us that even though we may feel alone or discombobulated or disjointed for one reason or another, and it could be around this time period that you're feeling it, we are never alone. We are always connected. Even if it is not necessarily in the physical realm, it is definitely there in the spiritual and the emotional realms. We can choose how to accept what we believe to be loneliness in our life. We can either focus on it in the negative and allow it to take over and block our communication and block our creative flow and block our desires to um, work through issues such as mediation or we can choose to be more open and know that we are always connected and there is a great expansiveness involved in this and try to work a resolution through communication, mediation, litigation or something along those lines. So for some of you, as I say, the emperor might be addressing a sense of loneliness in relationships in as much that he might be coming into your life and filling the void of what you believe to be loneliness. Now I might just mention this at this point. If you can hear really loud hissing <laughs> or a background staticky noise, it's the cicadas outside. It has finally got hot for us here in New Zealand. We have had a pretty cool summer, but the cicadas have burst out and they are now singing their love songs in the trees outside. Because only male cicadas actually make that noise and they're trying to attract the love of their life. So look at that sound as being a wonderful love connection of nature and put it to the back of your mind if you don't focus on it it won't be um, irritating for you now the next card we come into the second week the king of rods we're kind of um, insinuating similar energy as the emperor another fire sign person could be another aries person can sometimes be a male but not all the time now the King of Rods, again he is looking back in time as if he is mentioning or addressing something that popped up earlier in the year, possibly even around the time of the eclipses or even going back into 2016. He can be the person that sets fire alight in your soul. He's here to stir things up and ramp them along and get some action and get some fire going. He is the sign of fire and energy. Now interestingly enough underneath he has this orange burning glow and the word is called change. He can create change at many levels. He excites you, he creates passion, he inspires creativity. He comes along and he says kick your heels into action and whip up something and start something new. He can also be very entrepreneurial. So this can be associated with your career and your creative soul urge. So something in you guys is ready to turn a new wheel. And that beautiful change card with its vibrant orange, the sacral part of your body, the whole creative force of your body, is also imbued with the blue again. So we've still got communication. So I think somehow this change that's coming involves talking or communication for you guys. It could also bring in new people into your life, such as fire sign energy people, or it's addressing a situation that needed to be changed for whatever level or matter. 
Now when he's there, when this fire energy is there, you can really utilise it and kick a lot of stuff into action. This is the time when the winds of change are blowing. Utilise them to your greatest power and desire. Hop on board the boat, communicate it through, don't feel this energy over here of loneliness, get into the mood and the mode of change. And it says here, I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Fire is the passionate movement of our life, so ignite it you guys. It's a good time for you to do that. Before I go any further, I, I should have said, I normally do at the beginning, you had the one major arcana card being the emperor, and he is a positive major arcana. Then you had one rod, one cup, and the ace on the right hand side, the ace of swords. So let's move into the third week roughly. Remember, these energies will flow and move throughout different periods of the month as well. So don't um, set yourself totally into one realm. And now we have a house alarm going off in the background as well. And I think of that as being really synchronistic messages. So there's something I'm either saying or have just said that's important and relevant. The Four of Cups talks about um, an offer often coming your way and feeling ambivalent about it. It's kind of the card of self-importance or thinking that the grass is greener on the other side and that you're not really that... Um, happy with the offers that are coming to you. Now these can be love offers because the cups works of course in the realm of love. So it could be about relationships or emotions but it doesn't have to just be that. There may be other parts of life that are also offering you things such as potential job offers or new ideas about change or moving forward and letting go of the old. So somewhere you're being told to accept some of these offers coming your way and expand on them and think about them more and be more creative with them, talk about them, um, connect with them and work through because some of them are better than you think. There is also the saying that goes with this card that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So there is also a degree of needing to balance whether or not you believe you should be going down a certain pathway. So if some of you are thinking of relationship changes because of dissatisfaction or disharmony, maybe it's better to resolve those issues first before you walk, walk on into the new realm. The death card on the bottom again, we're still in the orangey sacral chakra area, but we're moving down to the base chakra as well. So the base chakra energy is at the base of your spine, and it's where we get our manifestation to the physical realm. It's also the fight and flight mode, our adrenaline, our um, financial manifestations as well, and our earthly connections. So when it says death, it's talking about endings of cycles and allowing new beginnings to come in. So there is a degree of change with the, you know the change card right there and then the death card right next to it there is a huge degree in this telling you that there is something changing for you guys and also because you have an ace over here as well what that's going to be personally it feels as though there is relationships involved because of the cups but there are also people and legal things around it because of the emperor the king of rods and that ace of swords so somehow these things seem to be intertwining themselves through your life and it's all about coming to the acceptance that whatever offers coming you're going to um, be needing to contemplate it, to communicate with it and to perhaps um, accept that certain things are, are going to leave in your life and you need to drop them off and move into a new phase. And that's when we come to this Ace of Swords over here. Now this ace does mean new beginnings again, so change, death of an old cycle, new beginnings. But this ace of swords is probably the most tenuous of the, of the aces. It has a degree of having had tension involved around it. This card can literally come when divorces take place or separations. 
Now the separations can be within a personal relationship or a business partnership. So there could have been some legal demeanour going on and some legal issues in the background that have been drawn out and going back some time because we've seen this over here going back into the past that are coming to the fore and are being dealt with. The Ace of Swords in your reading generally denotes that there is some success coming your way at the cost of someone else. It's like you are sticking that sword literally up their jacksy and saying, see, stuff it, I told you so, and I'm happy with what I've got. So you win something, and you take away a part of something that you have been fighting for, or arguing with or against, and especially in business relationships or personal relationships. As I say, for some of you this could be the final signing of divorce papers or the separation of a business liaison or partnership. Uh, the, when we see this, there are winners and losers on both sides. Now it's telling you to have a little bit of humour and not forget the humour in your life. So it says, I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. So for some of you, you might find this could be a little bit arduous, sad, or difficult to work through, or it's been tedious or draining. And again, if it's been draining, you need to um, recharge these, the sacral and the base chakra energies. You can do that by wearing these colors or eating those types of foods that exude those colors. Carrots, beetroots. Um, peppers, tomatoes, oranges, or all um, mangoes, any of the fruits or vegetables that have that colour. So a few key points for you guys, communication, something from the past coming in through to this um, month period of either March and or April, being um, activated, resolved, there's communication, there's litigation, legal matters, and there seems to be a degree of success or triumph. They are also telling you to let go of any um, feelings of loss or separation or segregation, bring yourself back into unity and into groups again, communicate, accept the change, allow the death to take place of the old and, and open the new doors, and remember that humour is one of the highest vibrations in our life. When we apply humour, we automatically raise our vibration and we allow that frequency to come in, which drops off any negative frequencies. So the power of humour, which is joy and laughter, also encapsulates love and happiness and bliss, the euphoric energies of life. And when you apply them around situations that may have been tense or turbulent, you decrease the negativity and you uprise the positivity. Again, this also deals with the heart chakra because it's the green color energy. So for some of you, um, we know this was going to be affecting at the heart level, relationship level, and you need to heal that heart as well. So you need to balance the heart with green foods, green energies, um, positive meditations, and affirmations as well, they're really helpful. Also for some of you there could be something about the heart, the physical heart here. So some of you may even have uh, like small minor surgeries in the heart, like a um, going for a heart check, MRIs, or you know when they put the dye through the veins, I forget what the name of that process is, but some of you might even be going through something like that to readjust your heart health. Because we've seen a lot in here coming through, especially that area in that part of the body and um, opening it up. Yeah, so there's something here about opening something up. So remember to your heart health for balancing in the physical way exercise and you don't have to run and you don't have to join a gym and you don't have to be climbing Mount Everest you can just walk it's free it's um, it's easy even if you're unwell or not feeling that good you can go out for a 10 or 15 minute walk every day and enjoy the scenes outside um, or even if you can't walk outside you can walk around your apartment or you can walk up and down stairwells any of those things are powerful and really excellent 
for invigorating and increasing heart health. Remember, um, massage is good for relieving blood pressure. Lethicin is particularly good. Flax seed oil is very good. As are the natural oils like avocado and olive oil, they're very helpful as well. So there are many, many foods on the market and many ways to look after your heart health. So guys, nice interactive reading there. Also, I'd like you to just look at the mandalas that you see on the cards below and pick out your particular uh, one that feels the most connective to you and then really focus on it and focus on that message as well and see where it takes you for the month of March. Let's put these away and do the final message. These cards are brought to you by the Fairy Realm and actually they're a Doreen Virtue deck. They're particularly pleasant to work with and they seem to have very, very strong energies. So this is for Aquarius and we would like to know the final message for them for their reading for March. Patience, please. So I will zoom that in a little bit for you guys and you can see with more introspection the card. Patience, please. What you're asking for is coming about. Have patience as there are unseen factors that need to occur first. And I think your whole reading had that degree of um, complication, if you like, because it had started from somewhere quite a long way back and it was working through, I think, to beyond March and that's why I kept mentioning April as well. We were getting timing factors for potentially April. Um, and the Ace of Swords does have complications, if you like, and even the Emperor, because we're talking about possible, you know, other people being brought in to mediate or help resolve issues and matters. So I also think there we are back again with the Sacral Colour for you guys. It's very important for you to balance this energy and to fire it up, get some sort of passion going and some involvement with um, your creative source. There's some message in here for you about knowing that if you use your imagination and creativity and connect with your gut feeling, your psychic self, it not just your brain, because I know you Aquarians are often, you know, so intensely using your analytical minds, you need to get more into the creative realm, and this will help solve this issue that's been going on for a while that's going to be um, addressed in this particular time frame. And again I see that colour orangey and the orangey browns and I always think of autumn like the autumn leaves and from my perspective it will be autumn here in the southern hemisphere in particular in March and April. So timing wise I think we're definitely referring to issues that will be cropping up that will need activation, creativity, resource, strength and um, power from your end. Remember that because that orange and yellow are the powerhouse zones of our psyche, our bodies, our souls and our minds. So lovely message really Aquarius but they are saying to you patience, it's not something that's going to be resolved immediately, it's a work in progress. So there we are guys, thank you very much for joining me, I love doing these readings for you and I love your comments, so please leave them um, beneath the video and like and sub and tell your friends, I really appreciate that. Guys have a wonderful March and <laughs> we've talked about April so much, March and April, but I will be here again for April. Make sure you follow the other videos that pop up on the channel, I do um, monthly angel readings as well and I do other higher vibrational energy readings too so that you're never left alone and you're always able to you know zeus yourself up with some positive vibe and I did mean to say that the words at the very front of the beginning of the video which for you Aquarians is new beginnings and the colors were orange and ochre and the number was one those numbers are actually drawn out before I do the reading so it was very interesting that that matched quite clearly for you guys and this was exact this was the card that was actually used and again just the perfect orange and ochre colors matching up the whole um, 
talk and energy that's been presenting for your video itself. So new beginnings, patience please, it is coming and it will be exciting. Okay Aquarians, have a great month. Thanks for listening, love to you all, namaste.